Chase Tag, the Pro League tournament for the planet's most intense athletic challenge, which takes the art of being hunted down to a whole new level. Incredible stuff! It's fast, acrobatic and relentless, with players who will stop at nothing to land a tag inside the frantic 20-second time limit. Wow! Every battle requires multiple split-second thinking, just one wrong move, and it's game over. And that is desperate stuff. The teams are made up of some of the fittest and most agile of athletes, hailing from the world of parkour, in which they fearlessly leap obstacles with precision, muscle control and balance. Over the past two years, the winners of national chase tag tournaments have been waiting for the chance to find out who is the best in the world. Last time we witnessed the bad boys of the US and the UK square off in a heated battle, which only added insult to the injury of Eugen's captain, his shoulder dislocated, his team eliminated. Tonight, the Europeans rock the quad, including some of Parkour's greatest superstars from Blacklist and current world champions United, facing a serious threat from Italian and Czech challengers. <laughs> this is WCT5, the 2022 Chase Tag World Championship. We've brought together the best parkour athletes from around the globe for the fastest action sport on the planet. This is the WCT5 World Championships, Four more teams today who think they can win it all. Dan and Connor, who's your money on? Well, it's kind of what we expected in Group D, with the two rival French teams, United and Blacklist, really performing well in their openers, laying down a marker. And that's quite some fight for the top spot in that group, isn't it, Connor? Yeah, 100% to see United and Blacklist go head to head. Obviously, both teams, real good experience with World Chase. Now, we got Seb Fukan for Blacklist and United coming off the back of their WCT4 championship. These are strong contenders here, but We've still got two other teams to worry about. Yeah, we do. And while they may be fighting out for the top spot, Czech PK and Pasta Moves from Italy, that's going to be a little battle for that third spot. They're still alive in this tournament. And if you haven't seen World Chase Tag before, here's how it works. Bringing himself around. Just as round by oh, all the way out that far side. And now he makes his move. In WCT5, two teams of up to six athletes compete in a series of one-on-one -on -one chases. Each chase lasts up to 20 seconds and has one chaser and one evader. Opportunity to point on the board! Oh! Whoever wins the duel stays on as the evader, and teams get one point for each evasion they make. And it looks like the opening point for this competition! It's the best of 16 chases to win the match, with a sudden death chase-off required to break any ties. Eager for a place in the quarterfinals are our next two teams. It's the defending world champions United, who knocked it out of the park earlier, going up against the newly formed Czech PK. Hi, my name is David Sumara. I'm from team Czech PK. My name is Jan Pospíšil, but everybody calls me Asa, which is short name for assassin. Czech Republic team is very unique. We actually had a competition. Everybody from Czech just competed. We just chose the sixth of the best. We didn't train together too much, but we are all individually good. Stepan is my student, actually. I've been training him like five years. Englehart is really fast. And then there's me, and I bring joy to everybody. Message for all teams, please underestimate us, because then we are surely going to win. Hi guys, I'm Loic Georgi, coming from Corsica, France, and I'm the captain from Team United World Champions. This year, we lost Clément and Charles because we had a, an internal conflict. I believe that loyalty is very important. That's why Clément and Charles are not with us anymore, because as they were the most famous of us, they have important YouTube channels. It was a problem for us because we wanted to be a community. And so we had the clash because of that, because they were not part of the team. They were just uh, some uh, individualities. We are still friends, even if we had the clash. This year, we changed most of the players from United. So we have young blood. We have a lot of different skills, but not only 
from parkour, other disciplines like ninja, tennis, OCR. I can't wait to see them on the quad because they have a lot of energy, they are full of motivation, and I believe we are stronger than in 2019. The French team United are the world chase tag champions. Green and ready to go, Loic heading off Team United, the current world champions for World Chase Tag 4, the previous event three years ago, though. Loic Georgi, the leader of this United team, the defending champions, warming themselves up for their title defence. They may have lost a couple of their stars, but they are still a force to be reckoned with. The team for the Czech Republic, Czech PK, featuring a mix of skills and disciplines, very, very new to World Chase Tag. It kind of showed as they got a hiding off blacklist in their opening game. Check PK evading in the opening chase, and it's Bastien Ducamp who's been sent in, and he sends himself over the top of the tilted cube to make the tag. Yeah, nice quick tag here at the beginning of this match. We've got 16 chases ahead of us to see Bastian just get that tag, get the chance now to get the evasion and be nice and fresh, ready, starting at a very unconventional starting place over by the ridge. In comes Jakob, stuntman by trade. And he drops down under the ridge and heads across court, looking to track down Bastian. I think the tag is made under the mountain. Yes, it is. Mountain, a very big obstacle, but very low EQ in the center of it. If you choose to change direction there, unfortunately, Jacob just has a, a whole open ground to pick where he wants to tag you. The dive was made, the tag was made, and now Jakob gets the chance for an evasion for Czech PK. Ben Alawafi, along with team captain Loic Georgi, very much the senior members of this squad quad for the first time in this contest trying to track down Jakob and does so without really going into second or third gear yeah I mean it does go to show what Team United are thinking strategically when they see Jakob on the evasion and they send in Banel Oafi they're trying to put him in early so they can get the chance for an evasion early and get that lead in this match Check sending the captain David Samara once again. But can he get hold of Ben Alawafi, who picked up a couple of evasions in United's opening game of the tournament? We can wait there all day. And as is, oh, Chaser threatened to climb into the tilted cube. He set off to the loading bay, but he could not get away around the corner. Again, I'm seeing the same mistake by, by Ben Alawafi here, coming in through the mountain with very little in between you and your chaser. Very hard to get the evasion. They might have been practicing some patterns and routes during the practice session that are not serving them now. Another round of cat and mouse, and it's Dustin's turn to be the cats. He is very much more mouse skill based, Dustin, but that's quite cat like as he crawls into the tilted cube. But David gets away, and it's going all the way around, and Dustin decides to cut off a corner, but not really cutting it off sufficiently well, and he smacked his head in the bar there, and still made the tag. I'm not sure he could see his man when he laid his hands on him. He's too busy dealing with a big bit of metal at his box. I think all he had on his mind, except for that bar, was <laughs> tagging his man at the 19 second mark. That was the last possible opportunity he could have get, so he put it all on the line to get that tag for his team. Well, let's see if Dustin can put those mouse skills to good use. We're told he's a good evader. Can he evade Stefan here? Oh, well, Stefan <laughs> flies out of the tilted cube and collides with the floor. And Dustin gets away around the front line, turns back on himself, and maybe going under or over the sisters might have been a better option. Dustin making a small mistake here along the front line, should have chose to keep that momentum as it's going late on in the clock. So to kill those last few seconds, you just need to increase the distance, not slow down and change direction. United captain Loic Georgi 
chasing. You can't miss him, he's, he's that guy there with the, the green hair. And he cannot miss Stefan either as he makes the tag. Stefan under pressure here at the loading bay with Loic being able to just thread between any bar. This pause and this idling keeps the game not just in a physical space, but in that mental game. The mistake was made and Loic capitalized on it. Philip comes in. Looking to get hold of Loic Georgie, who does like to start over by the ridge there, and he comes under the sisters but can't keep the pace up. And it's yet another chase which ends in attack. Halfway through this one, it remains nil-nil. And the Czech side are holding their own against the defending champions here. Well, can Philip get the first point of this contest? It would be a surprise situation to find the Czech side going to the lead against the defending champions. But we're seeing a few surprises here at World Chase Tag World Championship. And he gets away under the ridge, but then he gets tangled up in the mountain, but still doesn't pay the penalty. Incredible stuff! It looked for all the world that that chase was going to end in a tag, but it's actually the first point of the contest. To get that dodge under the mountain, what amazing catalyte reflexes to adapt to the last second and get that distance between you and your chaser. Well, one evasion already. It's 1-0 to the Czechs. But it is not going to be 2-0 with Ben Alawafi descending from the mountain. Great tag, great by Ben Alawafi. We now need to see Ben bring it back and evade this next round to draw or to bring up their score. David Samara, team captain, back in for the checks. Pretty circumspect start for this one, wary stuff, not willing to commit. That's okay in the early stages of the chase, but he does commit there. And it works out as well. I wasn't sure whether Ben had got away from him. But tag is made. I wasn't sure if you could make that thread. What a real small set of bars to be able to dive through and be accurate on the tag. <laughs> Dustin back in. And he goes slowly over to the base of the mountain through the tilted cube but David is already away around by the front line and he gets to the ridge he's not looking where his man is but his pace keeps him away from him over the mountain this time for David Samara a hop up onto the sisters but there's not much to hide behind there Dustin reaches through but ends up banging his arm and it's 2-0 this is incredible the previously undefeated United team trail by two to the newcomers Czech PK and David bring them into match point here for Czech PK. If he can just get one more evasion, then United will not get a chance to get any points on the board, and they will have lost this match. The Ninja Warrior finalist, the man who cannot be evaded, Ben Alawafi, must not be evaded here, and he is not evaded. He keeps them in it, but now he must go and evade twice. United, the defending champions, need some heroics from Ben Alawafi as Jakob looks to track him down. He's in the tilted cube and decides to go out of it and now cross court towards the ridge. Oh, but he's made the wrong choice there! And Jakob, look at the reaction! Look at the celebration! The newcomers have beaten the defending champions by two points to nil. And Czech know what it's worth here. Getting that tag meant everything for them. So they have to knock out the world's champions of United in this game. They have just lost and Czech PK bringing it 2-0. What a strong lead. Did you see that coming, Connor? Well, in no way did I see it. such an unknown entity as Czech PK being able to dominate. 2-0 lead against the world champions. Czech PK were thrashed in their opener by Blacklist, but they go up against the other French team in this group, the defending champions, no less, and they come away with a win to nil. Check PK2, United, nil. You just beat the defending world champions. How are you feeling right now? Really great. Like, uh, it was unexpected for us. We always wanted to win, but this is such a big uh, step forward for us.
Now, you didn't get off to the best start in the competition. Has this given you a little bit more confidence that you might make it through to the quarterfinals? Uh, I think we had our confidence all along. It's not about uh, who is best. It's about, like, doing best. So we are doing best. We'll see you after the break, but until then, don't get caught. pasta moves because it represents fast Italian. I'm Luca Spano from Italy and I am pasta moves captain. I think the fastest player on my team are Geo and Hector because they are machines. Jack is really like technical and he understands where to go and when to go. Lorenzo is a bit more of a thoughtful person. He's gonna be helping us inside the course and outside the course. Just try to have fun. Don't get too competitive because we're all in the same big group, which is parkour. Blacklist is a pack of wolves. Oh! Hi, uh, my name is Sébastien Foucault. I'm one of the founders of the discipline known as parkour free running or art du déplacement. And I'm the coach of the team called Blacklist. Blacklist is a special team because of the spirit, how they bond together and uh, the camaraderie. Everything goes with to bring to the, the sport to the elite level. Abdullah. <laughs> yeah, Abdullah is a wild animal. Valentin is the hardest worker in the team. He is relentless. Antoine is our fresh blood and he's hungrier than anyone. Winning World Chase Act 5 would feel like redemption for Blacklist. It would be the achievement of a few years of hard work, ups and downs, and I really think that we deserve it. Pasta Moves, the Italian team who proved popular with the fans here at York Hall, but are yet to make an impression on the tournament. And why wouldn't they be popular with such a polite entrance? Well, it seems to have resonated. We've got the crowd here chanting Pasta Moves, maybe a crowd favourite, but they're going to have to use a little bit more favouritism against their competitors. Blacklist, the French team, assembled by the great Sebastian Foucault. Backstage, they've had a real focus and intensity to their preparations. They're referring to themselves as the Pack of Wolves. Eddie Hadim, team captain for Blacklist, with a chance to get a point on the board. It's Giacomo Regazzi who's after him. And oh, wow, it's an impressive jump into the loading bay, but less impressive getting out of it. Very nice move over the sisters by Medi. And the pace gets him through the mountain, and the dive can't stop him. And I don't think he can be stopped, because Medi Hadim once again over the sisters to pick up a lead-off point for Blacklist. Great evasion there by Medi. Two laps round the quad against Pasta Moves. I'm hoping he is reserving some energy, though, because an evasion means you get to stay on. 25 seconds, a little rest, and the chance for yet another evasion and another point coming up against Luca for Pasta Moves on the chaser plate. It is Pasta Moves team captain, the lanky Luca Sparma, who's trying to get one of those 
appendages on Mehdi Hadim, but he gets tangled up in the loading bay. Nice sort of waiting, trying to flush him out from this open area, but he dives through the bars there, and he's claiming the tag. Mehdi does not know. So it's going to go to a disputed tag review. Well, you can see it's the right arm that's swinging. And has it made contact with Mehdi's left knee? Evasion given, and it is another point for Mehdi Hadim. Blacklist take a 2-0 lead, and that extra time for Mehdi only makes it more difficult for Pasta Moves to track him down again. Well, Giacomo couldn't get him, and neither could Luca. What about Hector? As he decides to go into the centre of the quad, try and control that centre, but he has to make a move and does by the ridge, and that's not worked out, but over the mountain they go. They're both going over the mountain, and he's so, so close, and to be fair, he was patient. He could feel the chance was coming. I'd rather take a small chance early on, wait until it's an even bigger one. Yeah, Hector on his tail the whole way through here, just choosing to pick the same line as Mehdi. Both of them real close to the tag over the mountain. I thought that'd be a mid-air tag here. Past the moves, the chant goes up again around your call. And this is Antoine with his lucky hat that he picked up after a victory in one of these tournaments in France. And it works for him on this occasion. The tag made before his man could get away under the mountain. Antoine here, a new addition to Blacklist. It'll be interesting to see his tag looked clean. Now, can he get the evasion? Because as we know, evasions are the only way to get points here in World Chase Tag. Giorgio's turn on the quad, a uni student in maths. A man who managed to knock himself unconscious playing tag as a kid, and yet he finds himself here in the biggest tag competition in the world. But he also finds himself trying to chase down Antoine and not really crafting any chances. Is there going to be one? No, there is not. Antoine nice and controlled and picking up the point. Antoine picking up the third evasion in five chases of this match. Blacklist in a huge lead against Pasta Moves. This shows that the experience really does pay off. Well, Giacomo gets another crack. But Antoine ooh, goes cross court and over to the ridge. And he shimmies one way and then the other, but finds an escape route and it's over the mountain. But he's got his man in close attendance. And it's always a tricky one, the mountain. It can be a good escape route, but sometimes there's just nowhere else to go. Coming down the mountain here, if you've got someone tailing you, I'd say best bet is to come out on the left. You want to head towards the sisters, get that cover in between you. If you head right, the person who's followed you knows and can see your positioning. Well, we've seen team captain Mehdi. This is his twin brother, Nabi getting himself on the court and swings around the loading bay and it's turned into a speed race around the outside and he nearly descends on him before he gets to the sisters but can't quite make the tag and Giacomo under the ridge and to the loading bay once more and is he just no he can't get away there's probably half a second left there not very much at all yeah I mean when we get like a 19 second tag like this coming up right against the clock you've only got one last opportunity to get it he's managed to get him down here by the loading bay a little bit of idling Wait until Viveda has chosen their route and then execute there to get the tag. Luca back in. Looking to track down Nabil and another swing and that one doesn't connect either. He was denied a tag by that DTR review earlier on. And he has been denied again. No, this time it does make contact. Luca Sparno making the tag. And making up for that earlier swipe and a miss, he's able to make contact and dive through. Luca, a big boy in the quad here. I'm seeing him dive straight through the bars like a scrambler style, even though I'd expect him to be a little bit more of a powerhouse, being a big ex-rugby player. Well, good luck, Luca Spano, because a fresh Augustine Cavaldini is after him, and he goes through the bars and can't make the tag, so he just holds back a bit and tries to force another chance, but he can't do it by the tilted cue, and again, he goes centrally, and there! Dive. Oh my word! 
the dive through the bars, the reach up over the ridge. He's just jumping and jumping and jumping, Lucas Farno. And the tag is eventually made, but I don't know how he survived so long. Augustine <laughs> throwing straight through like Jared Looney previous. This torpedo move, full sprint through the ridge. Missed, missed once again when the vault was over the ridge wall, but regaining composure, ready to jump under this mountain. Faster moves, the chad goes up again. Lucas Fardo very nearly getting him on the board with his cat a hot tip roof dancing, but Augustine Cavaldini did make the tag and he could be about to take this game away from the Italian team because Hector is trying to track him down and he is just gets him by the front line. 18 seconds, lovely to see the scramble here. A lot quicker to go under than over on the sisters. When you're faced with an opponent that is already using his high ground approach, you're going to need to catch him and not play him in his own game. Pasta moves, still searching for their first point in this year's World Championship. Can Hector claim it? Antoine Henrique is trying to stop him and does do, and he ends up seeing Hector go out of the quad entirely. Straight push out of the quad here. Lovely tag made on the ramp of the mountain, which brings us into match point. Antoine Enrique is looking to win it for Blacklist. And Giorgio can't make the tag. It's two sliding efforts, and neither of them make contact. And when will he get another chance? Will he get another chance at all? He will, and it's over by the tilt of cube, but he doesn't get that one, and I don't think you're going to get another option. In fact, he doesn't. That completes the victory. Blacklist make it 4-0 and make it two wins out of two in Group D. Antoine, a new player for Blacklist, able to close out this game with their fourth evasion. Awesome work here by Blacklist, showing the new guys how it's done. It completes a 4-0 win, and Blacklist may be the dominant force in Group D. You guys don't like to give much away. No, 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 I think it's part of, uh, of who we are. For us, it's not important. We have the job to do, we have a job to do, so there is no need to like convey like uh, a lot of too much emotion. We do have emotion like everyone, but for us, we have a, we have a target, we have something to aim. It's only game two. So there is no need for us to do a lot of stuff. The action continues from London, England after this short break. With two matches left to go, Italian team pasta moves find themselves needing a win against the impressive Czech PK squad. Pasta moves, the Italian team have been pretty popular with the fans, but not particularly successful on the quad. Back-to-back 4-0 -back defeats means they've been knocked down like Skittles so far, but they've got a chance to get back up and potentially reach the playoffs. Czech PK, the team from the Czech Republic, shocking United, the defending champions, and it's given them a fantastic opportunity to book their place in the quarterfinals, or at least the playoffs. Anything is possible for this team, who are completely new to the sport and playing in their first World Championship. Philip starting by the ridge for Czech PK and Luca Spano, the Italian's captain, who just clambers up onto the mountain and then has to sort of scramble through. And that is a big man going through a small gap. But when he gets in open spaces, he's dangerous. Not dangerous enough, though. And it could be a lead-off point. It's going to be a lead-off point as Czech PK get on the board. Let's go, Philip, with a Kong over the sisters to finish off that route and get the evasion for his team. We are now 1-0 to check PK in the first chase. Well, it is Hector to try and catch Philip. His team captain couldn't, but Hector is right on him, all over him like a rash. Three opportunities there in seven seconds. Hector swiping over by the loading bay through the center quad and getting him down by the lazy boy. Uh, 
Costa moves, the chant goes up, not for the first time here at your call as David Samara dives through the loading bay and can't find Hector Gost. Hector waits and waits and waits and waits and waits and waits and, waits and... waited a bit too long in the end. Yeah, I mean, it's a game of moderation. You've got to wait a certain amount to draw your pair through that obstacle. If you go too early, then he's going to get you on either side of the exit. It was a hard one to evade from. Giacomo Ragazzi. Gets into the tilted cube and makes the tag on David Samara. Very nicely done. Bit of a star player here, Giacomo. He's done super well as Pasta moves. The team, not so well, having picked up no victories in this tournament so far. The Italians have not picked up an evasion in the tournament so far. That must change if they're to stand a chance. And Stefan Goy chases after Giacomo, and he makes the tag by the mountain. Still, the wait goes on for an evasion for Pasta Moves. And the problem with not getting these evasions isn't just points on the board, but you've got the morale of the team at this point. You need to build some momentum. You need to feel like, yep, we're the guys. We believe in ourselves. We can make this happen. Giorgio Bartolucci pops up onto the ridge, and there's a little bit of a slip, but he manages to style it out before slamming into the mountain anyway, determined to get it wrong in one way or another. And Stefan Goy avoids that one. And we've got about five seconds left, and I'm not sure that he's going to make up the ground. In fact, he's not, because that's another point, and Czech PK make it 2-0. Giorgio there coming in with a very powerhouse stance. This is sort of what you need to intimidate your opponent. However, Stefan not falling for it at all, keeping calm and composed, making smart moves around the quad. Lucas Farno seems to have his own fan club up on the balcony. Getting up on the ridge, he doesn't need any more height. He's about 900 foot tall anyway. He just steps onto the sisters as if they were just two foot off the floor. And the slap is made on the back. And Luca gets his man eventually. Accelerating much faster than Stefan and getting that tag to score him the opportunity now for an evasion starting by the loading bay. A reminder, Pasta Moves must win the game to stand a chance of going further in the tournament. Even a win may not be enough, but just getting an evasion would be something to cling on to in their debut in the World Championship, and Lucas Bono might be the man to get it. And he goes under the ridge, and he's not caught by Jakob, who goes up onto the mountain, and he's claiming the tag, but I don't think he got there, Connor. Yeah, definitely a dispute. Lucas saying, no, I didn't feel anything. And Jakob was certain there was a tag made. And the evasion was given here for past the moves to get that evasion. Luca Spano. If anyone can do it, Dan, it's Luca. He has shown some real good skills here on the quad today. I'd like to see if he can match that with that little break and get the next evasion. Luca Spano with the first evasion ever for the Italian team here at World Chase Tag. And that's a nice move up onto the mountain, transitioning on that bar when it looks so difficult for those big, long strides, getting him up there. And Jan has thrown himself through the tilted cube. He's made it, Dan. He's made it. Oh there my. it is. Faster moves get that evasion number two, matching them with Czech PK. They're still in this game. It could be theirs. Luca single-handedly getting the first and the second evasion Pasta moves have ever had in any championship. Could they take the lead? Look, Chase 10 coming up. They've got a couple of rounds left to go. Let's see what Luca can do with it. David Samara in for the Czech team. He is their leading man. And can he get hold of Luca Spano, who again makes those pretty big obstacles look absolutely minuscule with those gigantic strides. Well, that's a great dive through the mountain from David to stop him. He was three seconds away from a hat trick. Hard work there by Luca. Big man, small gap. He's jumped, he's caught his hand, and then obviously David diving straight through to get a tag. We've got a game on here. Reminder that Pasta Moves, if they were to win this, they've got a chance of getting through to the playoffs. And it could seriously damage Czech PK's hopes. 
And that's some lovely work up high from David. He's not quite sure where Hector is, but he is now as he goes under the ridge, and he's got caught on it. And it looks like Czech BK are back into the lead. It swung one way, then the other, and now back again. Parkour guys, man, we're used to vaulting stuff. When you see a wall, it's okay, hands on top, jump over. It slowed him down, it blocked him, and instead of going under, he's lost that gap and not managed to get the tag. Giacomo Ragazzi back on the quad, trying to get hold of David Samara, who gets through the mountain very, very nicely and under the ridge. And he just puts on the jets to get round the front line and up and onto the sisters on the bar and over the mountain. And that is a tag from directly below. A mole tag from Giacomo. <laughs> he came from the underground, he jumped up and he got him in between the mountain. Giacomo, like an Italian landmine, exploding underneath the evader in that first one. He nearly gets caught, hoisted by his own petard there, but he goes to the front line, and there's a dive and a swing, and it's two goes now, but they've had to try and stop him. And a wow. third one does make contact. <laughs> Incredible stuff. Jakob has actually jumped straight over the mountain and descended on him, hurdling an obstacle predicting where Giacomo is going to go and landing as he gets the tag. This brings Czech PK into match point. If Jakob can get the evasion here, it ends the match and team Czech PK go through. Giorgio Bartolucci, it's do or die for Pasta Moves. They have fought back so well to get it level, but then Czech PK have taken the game away from them and there is a tag made and Giorgio has a chance to be a hero himself. Giorgio now stepping up onto the loading bay to give his positioning for evasion, and he needs that evasion. Stefan goes straight to Giorgio, and he goes under the mountain. It doesn't matter that he didn't carry a lot of pace because he idles around by the tilted cube, and he has another crack, and this time he does get up nicely from that slide, and it's over the mountain. All around the mountain for Giorgio Bartolucci at the minute, but he is caught out by the tilt of cube. It's the end for Pasta Moves and Czech PK make it two wins out of three as they secure their spot in the playoffs at least. Look, Czech PK, they've put in the work, they know what they're doing. Pasta Moves, they came in with not much hope. That hope was given mainly by their star player here, Luca, who's managed to get in those two first evasions ever for the team but as quick as hope comes, it fleets away. I'm so happy for you guys. Now tell me, what's the most important thing you've learned so far in this competition? So for us, it's different to train on the court because we don't have it. So uh, for us, sliding, for sure, and going through the obstacles. But we are, I think we are a really, really fast team, so we can learn and be much, much better. The action continues from London, England, after this short break. What do you think, Connor? A battle it will be. We've got Team United, previous world champions for WCT4 versus the Super Serious, trained by the founder of parkour, Team Blacklist. This will be French versus French, and I'm expecting blood on the court with this one. Look, Blacklist have been brilliant so far, but if United can win and win big, they've got a tantalizing chance to top the group and go straight through to the quarterfinals at their expense. This will be a battle. Right, let's get them out here. Blacklist start this off as the evaders, and it is Abdullah who is looking to get out of the way of Ben Alawafi, which I would recommend anybody does if they have an opportunity so to do. And he goes up and over the mountain, little look over his shoulder as he does, and Ben Alawafi is just having trouble trying to fashion an opportunity. And I'm not sure he's going to get one. He certainly won't now, because he slaps into the Logan Bay. And that is a lead-off point for Blacklist. Ben not at his best there. I've seen him on form, and this was not it. Abdullah, could he possibly double up in this all-French clash? He went all the way to sudden death when they met in this tournament three years ago. 
but maybe it might be a little more one-sided this time, or maybe not, because Abdullah is pinned underneath the mountain. Timothy getting the tag here, which gives him a chance to equalize. They're still one point down at the early stages. There's still all to play for. Mehdi Hadim steps up and drops down for the top of the tilted tube, looking to get hold of Timothy here. He tries to cut him off, but he can't get there before he gets to the loading bay, but he gets him at the loading bay, which turns out is just as good. Yeah, around the corner of that loading bay, Timothy really needed to keep himself small and get his hand away from the edge. If he'd have dived under the bars at this point, there could have been a penguin slide situation where he could come under the mountain to give him that space to get back up and slow down his chaser in Medi, getting through those obstacles that he's just dove through. Bastien Ducamp into the action. Looking to get blacklist captain Medi Hadim, but he moves up the mountain very nicely and the ridge as well. Bounces off those ramps on the side of the quad and he uses them again as he gets away from his man and under the ridge and just threatens to go up the mountain but never really commits and he doesn't need to because he sent him the wrong way and doubled his team's lead it is 2-0 blacklist they are looking to rampage their way through this group Medi using this real quick route. He's got this speed L going on from the load and made down to the ridge across to the lazy boy and back. This is his ground. He is very fast in open ground. Medi looking to double up. And he's quite happy to waste time. Quite happy to waste it. As Nicola can't make the tag by the tilted cube or indeed the loading bay and can he get anywhere near him he can he's close he's close and he's claiming the tag it must have been hand on hand on one of those bars because it never looked like an intentional attempt to tag him yeah a little precision there i think he's caught him out with the grab on the bar quick little tap medi discouraged by that drops down to his knees after getting the tag like up oh, cool end of momentum drops down as he steps off so Nicola Ego goes under the mountain, the 16-year-old gets under the ridge as well. And he's going all the way around the outside and he's going to go back the route he came. And it might just work, but he tries to cut across core and the angle of escape is cut off. Nicholas, not just the youngest player for Team United, actually the youngest player in the whole competition here tonight. Dustin's turn to get involved for United. They trail by two points to nil, and their faint hopes of a big, big win by five points and topping the group seem to be fading very, very fast. But do not mistake, these guys will want a win of any kind to take into the playoffs. Antoine's got some serious moves and speed, but that does not stop Dustin being able to thread through the bars. Nice little jump there to get the tag through the ridge. Brother Nabil pops up onto the ridge and drops down, nearly lands on Dustin's head, but can't get anything on him. Needs to make the tag with a hand, not a foot or a head, but what a lovely roll out of that drop it was. Unfortunately, he's not able to maintain any momentum, and it's all just slowed down, and that means that Dustin can get away yeah. under the sisters, and they're back in this, the defending champs. And there it was for Dustin, it all happened by the ridge, killing the clock by idling, pausing by his player, giving him the time to waste before Medi flushed him out. When the flush happened, there was already enough distance for him to know that he's won the point and get that first point on the board for Team United. Can Dustin follow up his first ever evasion world chase tag with another against Abdullah, who races around after him, and there's a little stumble, and it means that Dustin has a little bit of time to build up some space, and he gets back under the ridge, and Abdullah drops down upon him like a peregrine falcon, and Dustin is a very, very tasty little mouse. Yeah, that drop, man. Look at Abdullah. Straight jump, land on his feet, compressed like a spring, and then pop straight back out to get the tag on Dustin as he's tried to break away. Number 10, Ben Alawafi, after Abdullah, and drops down from the tilted cube, and that is a very, very no-nonsense bit of business from Ben 10. Quick tag there, we got six seconds by Ben Alawafi, flushing out through the tilted cube, a quick little strike there, giving him a lot of time to recover, six seconds on the quad to get the tag. Uh, 
He wanted longer on the quad. He's going straight back on, Abdullah. On just a little poodle down from the top of the mountain, but now he's going to have to speed up to get hold of Ben Ten. He likes descending from the ridge, but he can't descend to any great effect. A move over the front line and having a hop up and down around the sisters, and Ben Alawafi is looking good to level the match, and he's going to do it, you know. In fact, he just has. Ben Alawafi is showing the opposing French team what he is made of and getting that second evasion. Can he get a third? Antoine back on the court. Look at the re-established blacklist dominance. And that was a dominant tag, a very quick one as well. I've seen a lot of good work around the ridge here from Blacklist. This must be one of the scenarios that they have practiced and drilled a bunch in practice with Seb Khan. Timothy charged with stopping Antoine from putting Blacklist back into the lead. They were 2-0 up and then they were pegged back. There's a dive, but it does not make contact, and it allows Antoine to go over the top of the mountain and just wait, waste time down by the tilted cube. And there's more time wasted because Timothy got tangled up in that cube. And Blacklist, just when they were dragged back to parity, get their noses in front again. Here we see a Blacklist coming in for match points. If Antoine can get one more evasion, this is it for Blacklist. Bastien Ducamp looking to save it for United, the defending champions. Will they be beaten again? They won't be beaten again just yet. Blacklist are going to have to wait to seal victory, if they seal it at all. And again, a little snipe tag here by Bastien on the loading bay, trailing hand by Antoine. The United comeback was started when Nabil Hadim could not make a tag, but he makes up for it there and seals the victory. Blacklist a three from three. They are the French team that top Group D, not United, the defending champions, who came into this tournament as an undefeated team, Connor. Are we seeing a changing of the guard in this year's World Championship? There we go. I've always seen strong stuff from Blacklist. To see them work hard and get one over on the previous world champions is something else. We will be seeing both of them progress, but Blacklist goes straight through to the quarterfinals for United, the defending champions. They must go through a playoff if they are going to make it through to the last eight. And not only that, they go through in third place. It will be a very, very tricky tie for them as they go up against second in Group B, one of a fellow French team in Kimeo or Parkour 59. So now with the group stages completed, we can see all four of the teams that are fast-tracked to the quarterfinals. They'll get a short rest whilst they watch and await the outcomes of the four playoff matches between teams that finish second and third. Here's the full lineup. We're at the instant elimination stage of the WCT5 tournament. It's win or go home from now on. Don't miss it. <laughs>